you're a thin person and you don't know how to stand up for an advocate for fat people, here are a few quick things that you can do. Post your fat friends on your social media and do it proudly. Stand up for fat people. If you hear someone say something fat phobic to you, then call them out. Why would I stand up for fat people when you guys don't even have the audacity to stand up yourselves and go to the gym and stop having these problems to begin with? Can we just really quickly talk about how Marissa Matthews is real deal starting to look like one of our founding fathers, dude? F Benjamin Franklin himself, bro. The guy with the kite that everybody knows and loves. The guy that's on the $100 bill. Am I wrong, dude? She real deal got that Benjamin Franklin shit going on right now. I don't know what's up with her. But I just think it's really interesting that Marissa... Like these these first two videos, okay, I only know this because I watched a few seconds of it. She's putting on this, like, facade of not being crazy, which we all know, if you know anything about Marissa Matthews, she is the epitome of absolutely unadulterated uh, delirium. Insane person. We're literally looking at right now. And to see her talking in a cohesive way that isn't offending somebody abruptly or being very, very condescending, it's very nice, actually. I, it's like drinking... It's like drinking sewer water and then suddenly drinking a nice cup of coffee. I wish Marissa was like this all the time, but this is not maintainable for her. I don't know if she just had a really good day here or maybe she found out that she wasn't that fat. I don't know, but she is really, really good here in this video. So I will give her that, but I don't know what posting fat friends on social media is really going to do at all. Like, what does that even mean? Does that mean like if I post pictures of black people, does that mean that like I'm not racist? Like, how does that work exactly, dude? By what metric are we using to judge somebody if they post a picture of somebody that's fat? Suddenly they're not racist, like they're advocating for... How does that work exactly, dude? How, how, what, 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 is the, what are we thinking about that? Stand up for fat people. If you hear someone say something fat phobic to you, then call them out. Yeah, I'm not going to do that either, dude. I, I don't know, man. It just kind of seems a little bit impractical to hear somebody like on the train or like walking down the street and hearing somebody go, Damn, man. Man, I really think fat people are fat. I really think that fat people are really, really gross. I'm not going to walk up to that person and be like, Hey, man. Let's have a conversation, dude. I really think you're being fat phobic right now. And that's really fat phobic. Let's just be honest here for a second. I don't know why you would say that. Get the fuck out of my face, you fat phobic scum. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. Because that person probably has a gun. And not because I made them sound black. Stop. Stop. But because they are black. No, stop. Okay? It Because it's just not practical. I don't even know that person. Even if they, I, I was like my friend or something like that. Dude, if somebody says that person is fat and they are fat, what do you want me to say? Like, what am I supposed to say to that? Man, come on. They're not that fat. What are you talking about? What are you saying? Why can't you advocate for yourselves? And why do we have to do it for you? Like, I mean, not everybody has to be an ally to your fucking organization. You can support fat people. Tell me, tell me, please. Well, Hold up. If you hear someone say something fat phobic to you. Tell me this isn't Benjamin Franklin. Tell me right now. Is that not Benjamin Franklin? What is going on, dude? Why is Marissa slowly starting to turn into Benjamin Franklin? founding father dude then call them out and you can support fat people if you're a thin person and you don't know how to stand up for an advocate for fat people here are a few quick things that you can welcome back to part two since my first one was so popular here are more things that you can do to help and support your fat friends i just really wish these people would stop like stop worrying about what other people can do for you and worry about what you can do for yourself it's too it's way too like easy for these people to recognize what other people can do for them because that doesn't require them to do anything they're literally passive in the decision making skills of other people so it's very easy for these people to just put off all their responsibilities on somebody else in this way of saying like oh here's some things that you can do to assist me fuck you i don't even know who you are dude i don't want to do anything to help you because i don't even know you matter of fact i know you're like a super condescending ill will terrible person so therefore why would i even try to help you in any significant way it's terrible no marissa i think you should probably lose weight so that way you don't have to deal with these issues to begin with but you're probably not going to do that because you're literally the type of person that does what everybody else doesn't want you to do so go ahead and do that shit whatever bro it's like it's like growing up in a really really strict household like a really religious family household and you're a heterosexual man but in order to spite your parents you date a gay man or suck dick because you're you know rebelling against them or something like that that is the epitome of what marissa is like she literally sees that everybody thinks is a bad thing so she instead see even if like even if you had like a, a, a this is a very well received thing like everybody thinks that the world is round right marissa would literally be the person that says no it's not round because i think everybody else thinks it's round Okay, Marissa, whatever you say, bro. Her words, not mine, by the way. And fat people in general. So the next thing you can do is research. Do 
do research, bro. I think it's interesting these people say do research when these people are some of the most ignorant people on the fucking planet, dude. They'll sit there for hours and tell you that you need to do more research when I'm not saying that they haven't done research, but I think the research that they have done is like very passive research. Like maybe they watched a video or four or maybe they read a book fearing the black body or some shit like that. But that's really the extent of their knowledge when it comes to most of the stuff they know about the fat liberation movement or body positivity or whatever. Most of these people know the basics which is just that you know fat people deserve respect systemic systemic fat phobia all this other bullshit they know a few literatures that's it and if you test them on anything else it's over and you know what if they were serious about like knowing the things that they know i would love to see these people actually talk about the issues that they have with another person that doesn't agree with them because otherwise you're just having conversations with yourself over and over and over again and it's not really fun i want to hear you talk to other people that would be really interesting if you can go on like a debate or if you can go on like a discord call and talk to somebody about it like that doesn't believe in it like somebody like me maybe i don't know i mean dms are open right whatever i did hit you up on instagram but the point I'm making is like, you're saying the same shit and I don't believe that these people actually know anything because if you don't ever have to test your knowledge, how do you know how far your, your, your limit of education extends, right? It's like, I know and you know that when you went to school, there were a whole bunch of things that they just didn't teach you. And then when you went into the real world, you realize, holy shit, I actually thought I was taught this accurately, but it turns out that it wasn't. And you know what I'm talking about? So a lot of this stuff that they know, they do know, but they don't know what they don't, they don't know what they don't know. Do your own research about fat experiences and the discrimination that we go through. What is fat experiences, dude? Like never having enough deodorant because you have to apply it not only under your armpits, but not only that, like think about this, right? You have all this armpit area, but you also have more armpit area because your armpit stretches out. It's like when you have a tattoo as a fat person, you know, it kind of looks like really weird when a fat person gets a tattoo and they lose weight and it kind of like scrunches together almost like a, a balloon that like was inflated for a really long time. And then it like deflates and it's kind of like that, like electricity or whatever. It's like that. But these people have so much surface area that it's almost impractical for them to buy almost any skincare product because the face, the amount of face that they have is so large that the, the amount of skincare they have to use is like 20 or 30 percent more than what me or you have to use. Same thing with like body products. So like washing yourself, which I don't even know is possible for a lot of these people. I've literally seen people that are in the two, three, four, five hundreds. Um, and stretching upwards that literally physically cannot wash themselves anymore. So there's that or like not being able to wipe their own butt cheeks or whatever. Or like being able to get into the butt cheek is almost impossible because you have so much you have so much ground to travel if that makes any sense like when you go up and in to like scoop out dude it's like almost impossible for these people for me it's like nothing because i have very very chiseled defined um nice butt toxes and i can easily go in and up no problem but for somebody that's very very overweight or obese it might not even be possible like i remember there was one girl on tiktok that literally said that when she was like she was so fat at one point that when she took a shit she would literally have to go over to the shower spread cheek for five minutes just let the water glaze the inside of her butt cheeks and you guys might be thinking oh just buy a bidet just buy a bidet listen that person literally said they had a bidet but the bidet wasn't sufficient enough in order to properly quench the butthole that was hers so it's a tough life you live when you're when you're that big you have a lot of problems that i feel like a lot of people just don't recognize and it may not even stretch as far as that like fat experiences could also just be you have an eight inch penis but you don't ever ever see that because realistically you have so much skin in front of it that it really looks like a four inch penis same thing with a vagina sometimes when i watch fat people have sex i don't even know if there is a vagina in question i don't know i don't even know what that is it could be anything so it's a very ambiguous world they live in and i mean that's probably not what she's talking about when she says fat experiences probably not she's probably talking about like discrimination or like somebody on the street said that she shaped like a beanbag chair or something like that which is really disrespectful but i mean it's pretty accurate you know but anyway let's hear what marissa has to say own research about fat experiences and the discrimination that we go through your fat friends shouldn't have to be the ones to tell you every single thing that is wrong with the fat experience yeah but like you do realize that if these people are not experiencing this problem how the fuck are they going to know it's a problem so i understand what you're saying but simultaneously if they are not the ones that are going to expel this information then most people are not going to be there to listen because they just don't have it and by the way most of the stuff that you guys talk about in terms of discrimination is it's not that it's not discrimination but it's very like 
you guys have a very broad spectrum of that idea of discrimination where you consider something like the doctor telling you that your ankle pain is probably due to your weight you you guys would consider that to be discrimination which is really really crazy by the way or like stairs you would consider stairs to be discrimination or like when you go into a grocery store and there's not any chairs left because all the other fat people are using those chairs and you don't have enough for you you would you would consider that to be discrimination like a lot of people hear those words and they immediately think i'm not listening to this person anymore because that is ridiculous so I'm not saying that you guys don't face discrimination, but it's also kind of like a very jarring way of explaining it because it doesn't apply to most people's definitions of what they consider to be discrimination. And I'll give you a really good example. Like if somebody says, oh, uh, white supremacy, you know, I deal with white supremacy a lot, right? At my college. And then you go, okay, what are you thinking about when you hear white supremacy? You're thinking about guys that are coming into the fucking town on horseback with torches and p picket fences that have the N-word written on them that say black people are gay or whatever. And that's what you're thinking about. Like dudes in white hoods, right? You're not thinking about a dude that has... You're not thinking about a dude that put a, a, a sign on a, on a door somewhere that says, uh, you know, it's okay to be white. You know, but a lot of people would consider that. A lot of ac academics would consider that to be white supremacy. It's obviously not, but that's what it is, right? So when you when you have this type of language and you use this type of language like discrimination or other words like that that are synonymous with these things um, or these buzzwords, a lot of people have images in their head because they've grown up with these images or they've have like a fundamental idea of where these things come from. And then you guys just don't have those images like you guys have like very broad spectrum ideas on that. So you lose a lot of people in the translation of that because a lot of people are just not willing to listen to it because it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Stairs discrimination? What are you talking about? There are a lot of really important books that you can read. But she's not going to list any of them. I just hate it when people say things like this, like, oh, here are some things that you can do. Talk to people. Google. Read books. Wow, Marissa. So insightful. You're really telling me to do a lot of things right now. Wow. Thanks, Marissa. That help explain this. So doing your own research is really beneficial. Name the books. Name the research. Please. I just name drop something. I need, I need anything at all. It would be... It would even be okay if you said like fearing the black body as generically fucking terrible that book is. It would have been anything would be better here except just saying go Google shit. By the way, Benjamin Franklin. You can also look up different microaggressions. If I hear somebody say microaggressions and they're not like, I don't know, a fourth, a fifth or sixth year college student, dude. I'm immediately questioning ex everything that you're saying, dude. Microaggressions sure are real, but it's such a fucking terrible, man. It's literally buzzword bingo nowadays, dude. People just have these words, toxic, you know, uh, discrimination, uh, microaggressions, like all these words nowadays, dude. Like, where do they come from, dude? I hear them so frequently nowadays, and I just think, like, dude, I have not remember anybody saying these words five, six, seven, eight years ago. What the fuck happened in, like, the last eight years, bro? People have just come, like, progressively crazy. Is that fat people experience because we're fat? Another thing you can do is say no to diet culture talk. So like what? Like, if my friend, like, if I'm talking to my friend, he goes, listen, dude, um... I'm having a really hard time walking up the stairs. I remember literally having a conversation with my friend about this one time. He was like literally telling me, he's like, bro, I'm having a hard time walking upstairs. I'm having a hard time like taking my mom to certain places. Like she's needing me more and more and more. She's getting elder and all this other stuff. And I'm finding it harder and harder to do these particular activities. And I feel like I shouldn't because I'm only like 25, 26, 27. And I feel like I shouldn't be having these problems. And I remember like breaking down and going through the BMI test with this dude, understanding how many calories he was eating. And at the end of that conversation, which was like four hours, he told me, he was like, listen, I gotta lose a fucking weight. This is serious. Like. I didn't know I was obese until now, but I'm obese and he lost a lot of weight, which is really, really great. So a lot of times like this, this idea of diet culture it may not even be bad. They're just deeming it as bad because they want to stay in their bubble as long as they possibly can. Cause it's very comforting to stay in your, bu your bubble of never knowing anything else because you never need to know anything else. And you just have like consistently those same thoughts just echo off the same walls over and over and over again get your marching orders get satisfied for that day go to sleep do that shit rinse and repeat <laughs> over and over again which is pretty much the only thing that these people are rinsing and repeating you know forget about soap so it's not like these people are on a quest of truth these people literally have no they have no need for truth realistically like some of these people have literally their entire careers on the line based off of their ideologies so if they try to do if they try to do their own research or look up the truth in any particular type of way that could actually destroy their entire ideology and that's like very concerning for a lot of these people you know like to find out like that you've been a gay man for your entire life when the whole time every time you looked at vagina you were like ew but i'll do it but then you realize you were gay that could be very disconcerting for you same thing here like you for your whole life you thought it was okay to be fat and then suddenly you realize it's not 
yeah, it's gotta be really hard for these people, but it's the truth nonetheless. Oh, an example of this is labeling, like when you hear people label food as good and bad, you can like interrupt them and say, well, food has no moral value. That's true. Food has no moral value, obviously. I mean, that's, it's an obvious statement, but it, it, I just don't understand why these people choose to use the languages that they do. Like it's, it's obvious when somebody says, oh, don't eat that food, it's bad for you. Um, they're obviously not talking about like that food making decisions, like robbing people in the fucking street. Like you talk about a pomegranate and like, don't eat that pomegranate. Cause that pomegranate robbed my grandmother three weeks ago. Obviously not. We're not saying that, but we're saying that there are certain foods that are better for you and that you can choose those foods depending on your dietary issues. Like for instance, if you're very overweight and you're worried about calorie intake, guess what? Going to Burger King or going to McDonald's and getting that double quarter pounder with cheese probably isn't as optimal as going to the grocery store, getting a couple chicken breasts with some broccoli on the side and eating that shit for the, for the for the entire week like that's probably way better for you and sure every food has its place in a diet depending on what you're talking about um you know it's okay to eat candy bars it's okay to eat chips it's okay to eat all this stuff as long as you're doing it in moderation understanding that if like if you're going throughout your diet and you have like an extra 200 calories or 300 calories and you want to eat that candy bar i mean i'm not going to hate on you for it it's okay but as long as you're getting it within your calories or you're understanding that it's going to fit in your nutritional bracket that's all right it's okay the problem occurs when you start like eating anything and everything regardless of it that's the problem like these people literally think that all foods are created equal and that donuts are equivalent to like you know chicken breasts in terms of like i don't know moral value which is a very stupid way of looking at it but anyway so we shouldn't be labeling it like that so shutting those down is a really good point as well another thing you can do is change your social media feeds to include more fat people that's crazy dude not all fat look it's, it's the wording, dude. It's too generic here, okay? Obviously, not all fat people apply to this because these people don't actually believe that all fat people are the same, right? They want... Okay, they'll say that fat people are discriminated against. They'll say fat people are... Believe all fat people or whatever the fuck, like in her words, right? But they don't actually believe that because most fat people don't want to be fat. It's just what it is. And they're not meaning those fat people. They mean fat people that are totally okay with being fat, fat liberation people, people that want to embrace the idea of being voluptuous and big. They're talking about those people. They're not talking about like, you know, I don't even know, like traditionally sized fat people that <laughs> have actual logical functioning brains. So this is your friendly reminder that diet culture exists and creates this narrative just so that we can focus on our bodies instead of everything else in life. You, why would you focus on everything else in life when you don't even have your body in check? Like, why would you focus on changing the world when you're fucking, you yourself are literally dying from the negative effects of obesity? Like, that's, I see what she's saying. Like, she's saying, like, diet culture is, like, trying to take your mind away from something or, like, I don't know, like the big corporations and big governments are trying to like make you focus on your body so that way you don't like worry about Israel, Palestine or whatever the fuck else. Like I get what you're saying, but I feel like a lot of these people literally have like conspiracy theory on the brain and they'll say this shit so confidently. But the reality of the situation is let's be here. Let's be let's be clear on this. You shouldn't even be having to worry about that shit if you're literally 400 pounds. Like, what are you fucking doing? Can we just take a minute for, for that shit? Like, let's you worry about yourself, dude. Be selfish for a minute. I get it. Like, there are people suffering in the world or whatever the fuck. But, like, let's be honest here for a second. You're suffering as well, dude. You got to work on your shit. And I know a lot of people are very quick on not taking care of themselves. It's very actually super, super common for people to live a life and completely neglect themselves. They'll just eat whatever the fuck they want to eat. They'll have a caffeine addiction. Hi, me. And they'll, 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 they'll focus on everybody else besides themselves themselves and they'll do it passively they don't even realize they're mistreating themselves they'll tell you they're treating themselves right but in reality they're just not like this person is literally telling you that they're treating themselves okay but the reality of it is no they're fucking not they're literally <laughs> suffering every single fucking day but go off queen right and it's super easy to like blame all the problems of your life on the government or society and things like that like so there's a big problem with these people have is like externalizing all their problems it's created to distract us so that they can control us. I want to know, like, these are the same people that, like, these people literally are conspiracy theorists, right? And 
the problem I have with conspiracy theories is like most of the time when people say the conspiracy theories, I like I look at what they're saying and I'm like, dude, so you want me to believe that like all this shit is occurring, but like everybody else is like totally okay with it and all our government structures are fundamentally designed about this. Like there's so much I have to believe in order for your like statement to be true that it's just like not plausible. And uh, when it comes to like diet culture and things like that, I don't. I'm not going to sit here and say there isn't some truth to it in the sense of like, sure, there are corporations and companies out there that are trying to make you stay thin so they can make money off of you. But that's like the basic idea of like every single company. Do we literally we literally live in a capitalistic society? So, yes, most companies want to make money. Most companies want to be fruitful in what they're whatever they're producing. And that's OK. So, like, I get what you're saying, but. Are you also going to ignore the companies that do the opposite, which is like making money off the backs of you being fat and obese and maintaining that size? Like, is that not something that's occurred to you, too? And maybe perhaps like those companies are actually way more malicious than the ones that you're talking about. Maybe could we like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just seems weird that they would be so quick to judge one of the companies or like one of these like phantom organizations but never actually talk about the other ones like they're totally fine with the uber eats the door dashes these big fast food companies or even like these big like fast food chains that are dedicated to keeping you overweight and fat uh for your whole life because if we spend our entire lives hating our body then we're not spending our entire lives doing what we want to do and what do you want to do like living longer maybe i don't know it just depends on what you mean by focusing on your body like shouldn't you be to a certain degree focusing on your body and understanding that your body is supposed to carry you from year to year to year to year and like you only get one of those like sure you might have like organ transplants and like other things like we can maybe pick some stuff up but you do understand fundamentally that your body you only have one of those right like you have to take care of yourself and that is like super incentivized you should be trying to at, at most and i understand like you could probably do other stuff outside of that but first and foremost how the fuck are you gonna enjoy the spoils of life if your body itself is like falling apart day by day but anyway we're not having hobbies. We're not getting jobs. Not well, like, you're not having hobbies because what? You're focusing on your... Dude, okay, look. I know a lot of people that go to the gym and they consider it to be a hobby or even a lifestyle. Like, collecting, uh, you know, stamps or Star Wars figurines or whatever the fuck. Or going to the gym. I know a lot of people that do that stuff. And especially going to the gym. Like, it is literally what they do for fun. And I know for somebody like Marissa, it's not fun. Or, like, she looks at it as, like, negative or, like, a bad thing. But it's incredibly beneficial to go to the gym, build muscle, become anabolic. Because, like, it's, it's all about discipline. It's all about, like, having the aptitude to continue going to these things. Instead of just sitting down all day and going, like, oh, man, society, right? Am I wrong? It sucks, dick, and it's terrible. And it's big, fat, hamel, camel dicks. Uh, it's too easy to do that. And it's too easy for these people to just blame all their problems on society. Spending our entire lives doing what we want to do. We're not having hobbies. We're not getting jobs. We're not getting careers. Diet culture is a part of the patriarchy. And it is a system used to control women. Whoa, dude. Okay, like this is, it just goes too far so quick, dude. You can't just be jumping like that. Like it, it was very, it was very build up. You know, it was like super small build up and then just fucking zooped up real fucking quick the patriarchy and oppressing women where the fuck is that even coming from and i bet she's not even gonna explain where it comes from either just saying that just out of nowhere the patriarchy dude what the fuck what does that have to do with anything what do you not think that women control like a lot of these fucking corporations or whatever the fuck all right whatever dude it's a whole bunch of like white dudes at the top of like i don't know big marble tower tower somewhere with like staffs in their hand going like we need to keep people thin thin people are better which is not like i mean sure there might be somebody out there doing that but that's not like majority true but go off queen diet culture is a part of the patriarchy and it is a system used to control women because of our bodies and based in our bodies there's okay look there is some truth to a lot of this stuff okay women are the ones that are primarily judged based off physical appearance and you know it i know it so women are usually the ones buying clothes you see it i see it don't fucking lie to yourself dude i've been wearing the same fucking shoe i've been wearing the same shoes same pants same clothes this shirt is new fundamentally but i haven't washed it yet and that's i've been washed in two weeks but uh women are ones buying most of the clothes most of the things that are uh what, what what's what i'm looking for appearance based stuff while men are sitting here buying things that really don't even matter like you know like it it, it is what it is it, it happens right so 
I see what she's saying. Like there are corporations and things like that targeting women to buy clothes or buying certain things in order to incentivize them looking prettier or whatever the fuck. I get it. But that's advertising in general. Do you not think that men are being targeted for certain things too? Are you fucking kidding me, bro? There's a reason why I bought like 20 Star Wars toys in the last like one month, bro. Because targeting works, okay? And it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just something that exists, okay? But anyway, dude, Marissa's just like, I hear her talk sometimes and I just think like, it's not that deep. It's really not that deep. And I understand that to her, she has to like put it together like that because otherwise, um, how else can she be living in a life where she's fundamentally suffering the way that she is and there not be a giant overarching hand over her, like trying to control every fucking everything that she does in her life. Like at, you know what I'm saying? At that rate, then you could just basically sit down and just go, well, it's not my fault. Well, it's not my fault. You know, I can't get a job. Not my fault. Well, I can't do that. Not my fault. It is it's super easy to do that. But it takes a big person, no pun intended. It takes a big person, morally, um, intellectually, whatever, what do you, whatever, what do you want to look at to look at themselves in the mirrors and think, maybe it's something I can do. Maybe I can do something here. Maybe I can stop doing this. Maybe I can go to the gym. Maybe I can take that walk. Maybe I can stop eating this particular type of food. Maybe I can reduce it a little bit. That takes a bigger person than just somebody just sitting down all day blaming everything on everybody else. So the next time you want to hate yourself, don't. The next time you want to obsess about your insecurities, don't. And think about how you're fighting the patriarchy by not doing that. It just... It's just so crazy to sit there and say that shit, bro. Like, wanting to go to the gym is like the patriarchy. Like, wanting to contour your body is the patriarchy and oppressing women. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? How far... How far is your brain been microwave for you to believe this shit so fucking thoroughly? It's just... It's so jarring, dude. It's such a curveball, too, for her to say this shit and, and proclaim it to be, like, the be-all, end-all way of thinking about shit. It's just like, why, Marissa? Why did you choose to believe this shit? If you need a new motivation, use that. I will say that this whole concept that I'm talking about in this video is, like, the one thing that made it, like, you know, aha moment for me back in the day. Like, what, How did you, but how did, how did this aha moment, by the way, dude, I gotta keep it a buck. There are very, very few things that I believe from eight years ago that I still believe now. I mean, obviously, like the fundamentals. Air is good. Water is liquidization. Booty cheeks on women are very, very delectable and domesticated ones are good too. Like these things are obvious for me, right? But I'm talking about like ideology wise. I'm a completely different person compared to where, where I was eight years ago. And that's okay. Like you should want to change. You should want to, because like I know more and I'm still fucking stupid. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm a dumb fuck, obviously, but that's okay. Because as I become older and older, I'm becoming less and less of a dumb fuck, but I'll always progressively be a dumb, stupid fucking, you know, ignorant person, but that's okay. For, for somebody like Marissa to go, I found this out eight years ago. And then like, what, what did you find out that there's like a fucking patriarchy trying to hold you back from making decisions in your life even though that's not how that fucking works the only person that's actually holding you back from making decisions is literally yourself and instead blaming it on everybody else is just the easier thing to do so that's what you're gonna do that's what i'm hearing from you dude you can make your own decisions what i would love to know exactly what you're talking about when you say there are organizations or the patriarchy holding me back what do you mean by that like what is what exactly are they doing to hold you back? What exactly can you not do because of the patriarchy, because of diet culture? Please, I would just love to know what that is, dude. Like, I, I, I would just, it would just, mm, the chef's kiss. It would be so delectable if I can hear that. Like seven, eight years ago, it's used to control us so that we can't pay attention to more important shit. Like, you, 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 yeah, that's crazy, bro. It's, it's used to control us so we, so we can, so we don't have to care about ourselves when actually going to the gym when buying clothes when you're buying clothes to contour to your body when you're buying foods to actually fuel yourself that stuff's obviously not taking care of yourself that's obviously not worrying about yourself that's obviously not catering to yourself that's like the most fucking what are you talking about that's like by definition that's literally what that is diet culture if you're if you're proclaiming that to be what it is People going to the gym, people buying food that like properly nutritionizes them. That's literally them taking care of themselves. And your definition of that is not taking care of themselves, but like people just sitting there doing nothing is taking care of themselves. What the fuck are you talking about, Marissa? How the fuck did you get here? Hi there. Guess what? I never fucking claimed to. It's easy to see the world from your own perspective. You don't know what other people are dealing with. Yeah, Marissa. Ooh, damn. Marissa always got looking like a... Ooh, she's always looking crazy, dude. Always, bro. 
a lot of people it's very i see this a lot in like male communities where and women too a lot of people project what they think other people want like a lot of people project what they want onto what other people may want to so like i see this a lot in dating so like for instance women might say something like i want a man that has a master's i want a man that drives this car i want a man that lives here i want a man that you know is this tall so because i want all of these things that must mean that guy must want all of these things too so i must get a master's degree i must get this much money i must have this career and the reality of the situation is no that's obviously not the case like men want things differently compared to what women want and that's okay and the same thing here so like when people see uh like other people's perspectives a lot of people are like blown away by it because it's like they think that other people want this when in reality that's not what they want so like for marissa to sit there like she obviously projects heavily she thinks so hard about what other people want or how they should be how they should be and she doesn't actually notice that none of that shit is actually practical and it's all about what she believes right so yeah 100 percent, she projects attention to more important shit like herself hi there guess what i never fucking claimed to i don't know a thin person's experience because i haven't been thin since i was a child that's but that's not the point marissa that's not the point the point is you're you're proclaiming a lot of stuff under the guise of being discriminated against because you're fat but you're not looking at it from the other perspective and it's actually kind of crazy that you would say what you just said because you literally just doubled down on your own ignorance and so that just basically means that if you can't see it from the other side your entire point is literally mute like it's literally worthless at that point because that means that you you literally like you should always have a basic idea of how the other side thinks right like if you're a republican you should know how democrats think if you're a fucking fat activist you should think how how all these people think like it's obvious right so like if you're sick because like otherwise what what the fuck are you going to compare it to right like you're you that's ridiculous so for marissa to sit there and say like oh yeah i never claimed to so like are you actually doubling down like oh yeah, i don't know these experiences of, of thin people you don't have to know the experiences but in the same way that you sit there and say do your own research ask people have you never done those same things when it comes to thin people how the fuck can you proclaim that we need to do all these things but you've never done those things and you double down and claim that it's okay that you've never done those things what the fuck are you talking about dude do you not see how dumb that is okay marissa whatever dude into. I don't know a thin person's experience because I haven't been thin since I was so a child. Dumb. And even that, I don't even think that I was completely straight sized. But you know what I do know? I know my own fat experience. Yeah, but that's oh my god, Marissa is actually this is actually stupid, dude. This is this is some straight up this is some straight up beyond fucking dumb shit, dude. That's not the point, Marissa. I'm gonna say it one more time. If you're gonna make claims on the perspective of fat people being oppressed or discriminated against based off their body size and then never know what the other side is experiencing and never actually do the research or anything else even though you proclaim that other people should do it for your side you are literally doing the exact thing that you don't want people to do okay marissa fucking stupid fucking dumb okay and that's something that you don't know you don't what the fuck is wrong with Marissa? What is what is so wrong with her, dude? That is something you don't know. How do you know that? This is a comment. No, my experience. Okay. Look, I, I hate, I really hate this. I hate when people say, you don't know my experience. Fucking duh. Nobody knows your experience, dude. But you know why? Because it's your experience. What am I supposed to do? Like, re read your fucking Wikipedia page? Who the fuck are you? Nobody's entitled to know your experience. It's not that... That's not the purpose, Marissa. The purpose is to have a general idea of the experiences of fat people in the way that you're describing. So, like, if you're... Whatever, dude. Fucking Marissa's dumb. You don't know other fat people's experiences. Oh, my God. And the way the cookie crumbles is that thin people are not discriminated against oh. in every aspect of their fucking lives. But you don't know that because you literally just said you don't know the perspective of thin people. How the fuck are you going to sit there and say you don't know that and then proclaim that you know that? What the fuck are you talking about? You literally just said that less than 20 seconds ago in the, in the video. So what are you even saying right now? How can both of those things be true simultaneously? You're literally contradicting yourself. Because of their thinness and their body size. But guess what? 
fat people fucking are. Okay. So the It's just too easy to proclaim that you're a victim in today's world, dude. Literally, look how fucking easy this shit is, bro. And you know what? What's really interesting about Marissa is that she goes through and disables, like, certain comments or she'll delete comments and... It's, it's really, really crazy because uh, obviously Marissa doesn't want to hear any other outside opinions. And it's obvious because if she does and she re makes a response video, she sounds literally mentally capacitated, mentally disabled. It literally sounds like she has no idea what she's talking about. Uh, it would have been better if, like, I don't know, you threw some rocks in a dryer. That sound would be way better than whatever Marissa is saying right now. Next time you want to project your own emotions and shit onto something that you are not comfortable with seeing, stop for a second realize that you're projecting and then maybe don't comment bullshit like this you're putting words in my mouth i've never said you literally said it though like that's what's really crazy is that you doubled down and said that you don't know and then you proclaim that you do know so what are you talking about marissa you literally you you this person not only were they okay this person is right but you could have disproven them but instead of disproving them you told them that they were right and then you contradicted yourself by saying they were wrong your perspective is wrong okay and instead of just taking a step back and listening and learning you're being a dick true so thank you so much and i hope that you learned something today hi there everyone marissa's beautiful right she's just such a beautiful fucking person dude beautiful amazing person that has absolutely nothing going on in that benjamin franklin face genetic genetic differences you eat co genetic difference Genetically different. You eat copious amounts of calories daily. Fatness is not genetic. Bad eating habits and yes, this is a factual statement. That is a factual statement. Anybody that says that genetics play a big role in being fat is dumb. Like it plays a role. It does. Like depending on who your family was or like who your parents were, maybe your fat dis distributes in different places or like maybe you have more fat deposits here or there or maybe you have more to fill or whatever. Like sure, but if you're sitting here and you eat what you need to eat, you never have to worry about that for the most part. But if you eat a lot of calories, you're most definitely going to have to worry about it. So, okay, whatever, dude. One, I'm going to take a moment for this ignorant person's comment to educate people on what an example of fat phobia is. And this is it. This is not fat phobia, dude. This is why I, this is why I fundamentally disagree with these people, bro. Like, it, it, the, if you think this is fat phobia, somebody saying that eating a large amount of calories equals a, a surplus of fatness and you consider that to be fat phobic, you've lost the plot. Like you've literally lost the entire, like you're literally at that point, you're questioning the entire like rules of thermodynamics, how our universe is made. And I feel like you don't even realize that. Like you're literally arguing against the universe at this point. This person knows nothing about me. They it's not even about you though. What are you fucking talking about, dude? What is this like main character syndrome we have nowadays where everything has to be about you? Nobody said you, okay? Okay, whatever it is. No, nothing about me. Well, listen, you eat more than what you're supposed to because you're fat. That's obvious. But here they are assuming that they know about me. You're eating more than what you need. That's a fact. There's no other way to say it than that. Or if you were eating what you were supposed to eat, you would not be obese. You would not be obese. It's like they have cameras in my fucking house. They're assuming that they know exactly what I eat every single day. No, nobody's saying they know exactly what you eat every single day. But really? Really listen to the wording there, right? Exactly what you eat. Nobody ever said exactly. We just know that you're eating more than what you're supposed to, okay? In a very general perspective. Nobody said exactly, Marissa, and we don't need to know exactly what you're eating too. We just need to know the general idea of what it is. That I must be overeating because I'm this fat. And guess what? That's an example of fat phobia. Your stereotypes of fat people, your unrealistic stereotypes of fat- Not unrealistic, that's most fat people. Most fat people are fat because they eat too much. That's not unrealistic. By definition, that is the most realistic. Okay, Marissa. Fat people are clouding your judgment and your biased stereotypes are making you come to this conclusion. This is not based in fact. How is it not based in fact? Most fat people are getting fat because they eat too much. Am I wrong? Like this applies to 99% of fat people. Marissa is just like, Marissa is just arguing against ghosts at this point, dude. She's, I, I, she's arguing to argue, bro. I really want to know how her brain works because this is a, such a crazy-ass, like, dialogue tree she's put herself under. Because you don't actually know about anything that I eat. Also, you're wrong. Yes, fatness is genetic. But it, to a certain degree. Like, you can say that. It's like somebody saying, <laughs> I don't know, bro. That's like saying cars are about air. Because I guess because cars have air. Like, sure, 
to a certain degree but like not really like they have you know what i'm saying it's 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 true but it's also like so it's so blatantly obvious that you could say this shit is it never needs to be said you know what people are talking about like genetic what well how the fuck does it whatever bro so that's another thing that you're uneducated about and ignorant about so i hope you all learned that this is an example of what fat phobia is so that you not. should not do it to other people if you're if this is what your definition of fat phobia is you are literally gone your mental capacity is so diminished at this point that you're literally like somebody trying to give you somebody literally speaking facts is now like actually harming you like you feel this is actual if you think that this is fat phobia it's gone you cannot be saved at this point dude this is the most unfat phobic thing i've seen in this video and uh you proclaim it to be fat phobic it's done thank you so much i really hate to be the one to educate fucking bruh Fatness greater than, bruh, fatness is not genetic. You have, have you ever researched this? The mom, the mom's fat cells literally transfer to the child. Everyone today, it seems, but I hate to tell you this, but genetics is a factor in someone's health. And they're. Yes, genetics are a factor in somebody's health. That is a factual statement. Like, there are some hereditary diseases that you can be passed along. This is true. Marissa, what do you, why do you have to say these dumb things? Like, why do you have to say the most obvious shit as if, like, anybody is arguing that stuff? Nobody is saying that it's not, okay? We're just saying that when you, when you say that fatness is attributed to genetics, that's, like, that is the most, sometimes there could be problems just asking questions, right? I've said this before. In the same way here, like, saying the words that you're saying, even though they're not like exactly wrong they're a, they're not exactly true either and the more true statement would be sure genetics play a slight role in how fat you can be and how fat your body will be in general but mm, for the most part it really just comes down to calories in calories out and whether or not you're eating too much that's really what it comes down to so like you're not you're not you're not incorrect but you're also not correct either your body size Take a look at the above little diagram. So for environmental, you have all- What did you Google for this, dude? What, you literally just went on Google and just typed in fucking, what the fuck? Is this your definition of research? Just go on like, go on Google and type in like two phrases and then go to the images and just find like a Venn diagram? <laughs> what? Come on, Marissa. Come on, dude. And you over here telling people they need to do research and this is your definition of research, bro? What is this? What is this shit? Can you move your big ass head so I can see it? All of these things. Socioeconomic, you have all of these I can't things. even see it, Marissa. Scroll up a little bit, dude. Move your big ass head. That, that help determine someone's health. In between individual and sociocultural, we have what? Oh, Janetta. Oh. Okay, you found one fucking Venn diagram, dude. What does what this even prove, dude? This is not some like peer reviewed study. What are you doing right now, Marissa? What the fuck are we doing? And by the way, if you're going to show something off, why the fuck are you the majority of the screen? God damn, your head is big. Here's another, if you want another um, Man, diagram of determinants I, I, of I cannot believe that she critiques somebody for not doing research. And this is her definition of research. Look at this shit. Health, you can Look at this that. fucking shit. Or this one. Look at that. Wow. Biology. Wow, Marissa. So much research. Wow. And genetic endowment look at that yeah, right so there. great so great and then when we talk about mental health look at that all of these things help determine someone's health but because you're all so fat phobic you can't open your mind and understand it hopefully you'll be less ignorant and educate yourself she pearl clutching do you see the way she's touching dude she pearl clutching right there no hello there that was just dumb there's nothing else I can say about it than that. Fucking crazy that that's her definition of research. Everyone, I am just here to pop in to let you know that fat people- Them things on the floor, bro. What? What is going on? Every single fat person in the entire fucking universe, guess what? Is discriminated against because of their body size. Because we live in a fat phobic society who hates fat people and- It just depends, like, look. There are going to be experiences that fat people share that you could consider to be discrimination. 
and I'm not doubting those things, but the way that you're describing the discrimination is very disingenuous because like if you're sitting here saying that all fat people are discriminated against in general, what you're basically saying or what most people are hearing is that fat people live a very tragic, disgusting life and that everybody else needs to change for them. When in reality, there are probably some benefits to being fat depending on where you are in society, right? Like if you're fat, that probably means that you have enough wealth to eat. That probably means that you're sitting down most of the time. That probably means like a lot of things and that's a privilege for a lot of people given the fact that there are still entire populations or society that literally have to work outside on their hands and knees all fucking day long whatever so it, yes i agree that maybe you guys are experiencing some type of that it, it, it may be negatively too but it's just like if you're saying things like oh it's discrimination because stairs like i get it like it's not something you want to walk up but it's just too easy it's just too easy bro and prioritizes thinness yeah no shit no, you know why it prioritizes thinness? Because that's literally like, for the majority of majority of human existence, being thin was the default. And having to work outside and having to walk upstairs or walk up mountains or walk anywhere, that was what we had to do. And it's only till recently that we had automobiles and lazy boys and other things that we can sit down and do work there. And you do realize that our society still is built that way, right? It's still built. Most infrastructure is still built for people to walk. So if you're considering that to be fat phobic, you're dumb. There is no discussion about this. It literally is a fact. Fat people are discriminated against based on their body size in every aspect of life. When it comes to work, when it comes to health, when it comes to clothing. It's just like, it's, it's not, it's true, but it's also like the most lesser form of discrimination I could ever think. You can't find clothes, therefore it's discrimination. I can't, they wouldn't hire me for this position because they said I was too fat and I couldn't stand up for a certain period of time. And I know I couldn't do that. It's discrimination. It's just too easy. Like it's not real. Like it, it sure it's discrimination, but it's also like, why are you going that far? If that's if that's where you have to grab from, your claims are so worthless. Like literally, they're so fucking worthless. They almost have no value at all. When it comes to relationships, literally, you can't you you can't say when it comes to relationships. That's literally a preference thing. Oh man, Marissa. Really, every aspect of a fat person's life, they are discriminated against. You know, you just don't be fat then. Just like don't be fat and you don't have to deal with any of this so-called discrimination. Because of their body size in some way, shape, or form. There's no arguing about this. Sure. If you think that I'm wrong, then instead of projecting your own like thin insecurity. If you think that I'm wrong, can we have a conversation about it? Can we talk about it? Can we have a conversation? Do you want to like have a dialogue? Do you want to like open up a Discord call and have a conversation about it? Or no, none of that stuff. Because I think you're wrong. I think you're really wrong, matter of fact. And I would love to have a long, or not even a long, just a just a conversation. Just a conversation, Marissa. He's on to me. I challenge you to a conversation. Stop for a second, take a step back, and think, wow, I must be so ignorant that I've never- See, like, see, Marissa, like, you're coming from a place of, like, you think that thin people thinking that fat people getting all these privileges is, we think it's, like, crazy. So when you say that we're ignorant and not considerate for all these people, you immediately lose a lot of people because you're being disingenuous, you're being rude, and you're being mean for no other reason. Like if you wanted to, if you wanted people to actually stay for your message, the last thing that you should do is disrespect them. I gotta keep it a buck. You're you're gonna lose a lot of people because the people that made it this far and think, oh, I, I still think that fat people don't really have to face that much problems. I think that a lot of these claims are just kind of bullshit, um, but I'm willing to listen. And Marissa goes, well, you're ignorant. You're not considerate. You're like really, really fucking fat phobic. Like a lot of people are going to hear that and go, oh, oh, well, I guess I'll just continue to be that way. Fuck you, Marissa. A lot of people are going to do A lot of people going to do that. And I feel like that's a big problem that Marissa has. Like she has a, a very fundamental misunderstanding of how to communicate with people, including through the internet, which is really crazy because like you're not even actually talking to anybody through the internet. You're just talking to the screen at that point. Thought or considered this this experience before. Maybe it'll be listened to if it's told to me enough. Okay, so you are clearly new to my page. Hello, I relate to the PDA profile, okay, of autism, pathological demand avoidance. So, society tells everyone to be thin. Okay, never gonna do that. I'm gonna be fat. Duh, right there. Wow, just like that? Just like that? So somebody tells you not to, somebody tells you to do something and you do the opposite just because? Wow. Just like that, huh? So like everything you believe is literally based off that then. That's, that's really what it is, huh? So like you are only fat because other people say that it's not good to be fat. 
why did you why the how how did you what i get it maybe i get it like a mental disorder right i is that what that is okay but it seems like you have the ability to cohesively think about that like you understand that that's not good right like it seems like you do it seems like you have that understanding that this is not a good thought process why marissa why i look I know that there are people out there that do have mental issues, but sometimes I feel like people use mental illnesses as like crutches to say whatever the fuck they want to say. And then when they're corrected on that or somebody calls them out on that, they go, oh, uh, so you can't critique me. I have a mental illness. No, that's not how that works. Stop using that. No, that's terrible. I, I can't have conversations with those people. It, own what you said. It is what it is. Like, I get it. You have a mental illness. And like, I'm sure that many people have mental illnesses and things such and so forth. But I just hate it when people say I have a mental illness, therefore I cannot be criticized for the things I say. You're fucking, that's crazy. No. So until society changes, I will probably always be fat. That doesn't even make sense. Like your whole point is to make, your whole point is to make society more fat acceptance, right? So like equality or I guess equity across the board for fat people, making things more accessible for fat people and so on and so forth. And so you're saying when you get fat, you're going to be thinner. What the fuck then? What the fuck? You're, so you're just like, your end goal is to make things better for fat people so you can be thin? Okay, cool. Cool, Marissa. Because I have no desire to listen to, to fucking society telling me that I need to be thin to, in order to do stuff. Marissa is dumb. Marissa is dumb. Marissa is really dumb. So, by the way, when she says society tells me to do stuff, she's not, she doesn't mean in general like society is like blowhorning like, you need to be thin. No, she's really talking about like, if you want to work a job, you have to stand up maybe, or like if you want to go get groceries, you probably have to go to the grocery store, or if you want to have to go to the store, you might have to walk upstairs. Like that is society telling her that she needs to be thin, which is really crazy, but in her mind, that's what it is. Marissa, this is confirmation. Marissa is dumb. This is stupid. Like I don't know anybody that could be listening to this woman. She's literally stupid. Listen to, to fucking society telling me that I need to be thin to, in order to do stuff. Marissa, you know what I think you should do? I think you should be fat. I think you should be fat, Marissa. Oh, I just think that you should be fat. It would be great if you were fat and you were, you know, beautiful, fat person. Um, oh, wow. It would be really crazy if you went thin after that. Oh, being thin is just gross. Ooh, ugh, gross. Right, Marissa? So telling me, don't eat all the food. Guess what? I'm going to eat all the food now. Just so that you can't have any. I thought that you said that there was, I thought you said that food is like. Because that's how I am. Now, don't get me wrong. It did work for a while. That when I first got made fun of for being fat, I was mad that people were doing that to me. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to be thin. Yeah, that didn't last. And I have now been in this mindset of being fat and staying fat for longer than the other one. Sad. So you are currently helping me stay fat. So be, be fat. Continue to be fat. How are you going to tell me that if I tell you not to eat, you're going to eat all the food, but you told me that food is not the reason why you're fat and it's genetics. So which is it? Like, how can Marissa post so many videos and have all of them contradict each other so cohesively? It's actually crazy. Like, she literally said that it was genetics and then yet here she is proclaiming that it's not genetics. Thank you. Okay, so let's get something. You said it many times laugh my ass off there's even cringe compilations on you about it I'm straight here no one i do not sleep with every single guy who looks at me because i actually have high standards and i don't sleep with i don't know what she means by high standards dude i'm pretty sure marissa has said that she's had sex with hundreds of people so i don't know by what metric her standards are being judged but that's a very like for me i i wouldn't okay look I wouldn't consider me to have high standards and I've only had sex with four people, okay? I'm not joking about that, four people, okay? I'm, I'm uh, fine, right? Um, I don't think I have high standards and yet four people. For Marissa to say she has high standards and have had sex with hundreds of people, I, we must have like a different understanding of what high standards are. With men, unless there's a certain circumstance that happens. Yes, I have slept with over 300 people. God damn. I might be near 350 damn. or 400. God damn. How do you, what the fuck? What is that sh What? How far did you go up on 100? I, I, I probably had slept with 100, 300 people. My bad. Maybe 350, 
400, you know, maybe 400. Oh, what the fuck? That's 100. That's an extra 100 on top, dude. How the fuck you shoot from 3 to 400, dude? Which one is it, Marissa? How you lose count like that? That's crazy, bro. If you're out here literally going, it could be 300, it could be 400. Dude, that's a big ass difference, dude. That's a lot of fucking people. How'd you even get around that far? God damn. But I don't keep track anymore. Why? Damn, that's a problem. But your first comment said, you sleep with every guy who looks at you, which is not true. Because if that were true, then millions of people would have the lucky, gracious. Marissa, stop taking shit so fucking literal, dude. I, I fucking hate it when people take shit so fucking literally, dude. Like, you know what the fuck I'm saying. You know what the fuck I'm saying, dude. When I say you, you have sex with every guy you see because you've had sex with over 400 people, that shit shouldn't go, oh, well, I obviously can't have sex with every guy I see because my body count's only 400 and not 7 billion. Yes, Marissa. Yes. You are so right. Oh, my God. You know, this is why these people are, like, fundamentally incapable of having conversations with anybody because it's like... Nobody talks like this. Nobody. Nobody. You know what I fucking mean. Stop acting so fucking obtuse. It's a company of me. Because millions of men have looked at me. Right. So, I'm taking your statement literally- And then also, you're ignoring the fact that those men want to actually have sex with you. It's not just simply they look at you and think, Oh, my, I might as well have sex with Marissa. No, obviously, there are standards too, right? They, they may not want to have sex with you too, right? Early. And you're factually incorrect here. So no, I don't sleep with everyone. Cool. But yes, I sleep with a lot of people. Ugh. And I don't understand what is so wrong about that. There's nothing wrong with it. You can have sex with whoever you want to. I'm not... Listen, I don't think... It, a lot of people have told me that women get worn down from having sex with a lot of men, right? And I've looked at it like this. I've dated women for many years, and I've had sex with women hundreds of times. What is the difference between having sex with a woman a hundred times and a woman having sex with a hundred different guys? What's the difference? What is the vagina, like, ma miraculously going to know the difference? Maybe, like, the girth-wise and shit like that, sure. But, like, that's not really how that works. So, there's no problem with Marissa having sex with hundreds of people. The problem is you bragging about it and sitting there. <laughs> you bragging about it as if it's an accomplishment somehow. And, and, and saying that it's, like, a good thing. That's the problem. It's not good to have sex with 400 people. How the fuck did that happen? And why are you trying to make fun of me for it? Go ahead, have sex with whoever you want to, dude. It's just really, it's just really kind of like weird that you would brag about that shit. Yeah, I'm a slut. Damn. So fucking what? Like, I don't get it. Just live your life. True. Some of you guys make- Dude, serious Benjamin Franklin vibes right here, dude. Benjamin Franklin right here, dude. Founding father. Where the declaration at, dude? Where that at, bro? Where George Washington? Absolutely no fucking sense at all. Why would I have for consideration for other people when fat people are not considered in our society? Marissa's stupid. I'm sorry, dude. We got to end the video here. Marissa's actually dumb. I can't watch anything more than her, dude. I'm sorry. That's got to be it. Marissa has, like, pulled my tolerance to the peak today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. What do you want? I can't. It's impossible, dude. How long is this video already? Like, an hour? That's what I got to do for today, okay? That's it. That's all we got. I'm sorry. It is what it is. Okay? You're beautiful, by the way. You look very good today. You look fucking very superficially, amazingly awesome. Ugh! You look good. Anyway, um, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in, uh, I guess, UVA, since this is like a sunblock or whatever, 45 FPS, wow. And that's like for tanning and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't, somebody bought it for me. So there you go right there. I'm working on skin stuff now. I'm like really into my hashtag skincare era or whatever. I don't know, dude. It's not. I don't really do it myself. Somebody else has to do it for me. I can't do it myself. I'm a child. But anyway, uh, but you know who's not a child? You. You're not a child. And I mean that in your maturity level. You're a very mature person. You're a very adult acting person. I bet you have four plants in your house that you take care of on a daily basis. And that's beautiful because I could not be trusted to take care of a plant. And the fact that you can is indicative of how beautiful of a person that you are. You have a literal green everything. You can grow things from the peak of dust to beautifulness in a few short steps because you're such an adult and you have so much responsibility and you're so amazing at taking care of people. And I really treasure that about you. And by the way, I was looking at your kneecaps today. I, uh, well, 
What were we talking about? Sorry. Um, it almost kind of seemed like the blood like ran from my head and went somewhere else. I don't know. Um, your just kneecaps are just so... Mm. Uh, anyway, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord. All that stuff will be linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.